All right, let's begin. You're going to start on page 447 in the text, okay? And this is lesson 9-3. It really isn't a whole lot different than what we've already been looking at. And that is, what I mean by that is we're looking at patterns. We've been looking at patterns, number sequences. We've been looking at patterns there, okay? Now, there, I had an email from a student, and I really wanted to go through this. And part of their email would have looked something like this. Okay, um, or the question that they were asking was, which, which number was it? This is a great question. I, uh, it was 23, 24, 25. All right, so from the previous lesson, kind of getting our minds thinking about patterns, it was 23, 24, 25. It was one of those last problems that we had addressed. And the one that I want to particularly draw your attention to is 23. Okay. So it said 2 to the 4th equaled what? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is? 16. 16. And then they said 2 to the 3rd was? 8. eight. Fantastic. 2 to the squared is? 4. 4. Fantastic. 2 to the 1st is just? 1. 2. Two. And then there's this weird, hunky, donkey, funky number where it's like two to the zero power is question mark. All right, stop, stop. I, I bet you a lot of you do know, but I want to get to, I want to kind of show you mathematically how we get there. Because the answer was in the back of the book. Right? That was intentional. All right, so here's what I wanted to, to get to. The numbers here keep going down by one, okay? So there's a pattern there, okay? This is two times nothing, but th there's, there's more to it here than that, and you would learn about that later in school. This is just two, two times two, two times two times two times two, and this is yeah, two times two times two times two. Then you try saying that two times two times. They both start with T. It's like a tongue twister. Two times two times. I'm gonna see how many times you can say that in a row. Go ahead. Yeah, you guys are doing real good. Yeah. Two times two times two times two times two times two times. All right, I've lost it. I think I was about three or four in. Okay. You gotta really close the eyes. Parker, did you move? <laughs> <laughs> All right, five, four, three, two, one. Bringing it back. All right, so to get from 16 to 8, what did we do? What did we do? How did you get from 16 to 8 and then from 8 to 4? You subtracted 8. Okay, that would be, yes, to go from 16 to 8, you could subtract 8. But here's another way of thinking about this. What you do here, you also have to do here. So if I subtract 8 and subtract 8 again, I don't get 4. So that's not the approach we can take. What do we do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Okay. So we divided by 2. And then we divided by 2 again. And then to get from 4 to 2, we divided by 2. And then to get from 2 to here, we would have to divide by 2. That is the only thing we can do. And when you take two and you divide by two, what do you get? Four. One. Okay, now, this actually leads to a much bigger idea. And the bigger idea is this, that any number raised to the zero power will always be one, no matter what. If it was three to the zero power, one. 5 to the 0 power, 1. 10,000 to the 0 power, That's a lot of zeros. 1. It doesn't matter. You raise anything to the 0 power, and the only number it can equal is 1. Now, you might be thinking, how does this play out? When you get into algebra, you will end up with numbers that have 0 power, and the answer will always be 1. Okay? So that's where this was supposed to lead. And that's why they gave you the same sort of setup 
in 23, 24, and 25, the answer to which for each of those was zero. one. One. <laughs> Three, two to the zero power, one. Three to the zero power, one. Four to the zero power, one. All right. Moving on today. Moving on today. Let's go ahead and look at some tables and some patterns. All right, I want you to start by creating a table. And let's do this. I want to create a table that has uh, five by two. So boom. Or do you? Or like that. Okay, I'm going to type into this. And if you would, this is going to be the same table that is on page 446 in your book. There's a ghost controlling it. Every time you look, it stops. That's some good handwriting. Wow, that's some good yeah, handwriting. Yeah, that's actually. Yep. Yeah, I got really neat, very almost like typing, uh, handwriting. Yeah. yeah. It, looks exactly it, it seems one hundred percent legit. It is one hundred percent legit. Don't worry. Everything I do is legit. That's what my parents have on my birth certificate. <laughs> 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 That's a real laugh right there. Right there. That's, a, That's what you sound like. Hey. Don't need from here. Hey. Don't let your baby laugh like this. Are you calling him my baby? <laughs> That is a terrifying concept. I don't ever want to, no. No, I don't ever want to do that again. It's a dopelet. Oh. Raw. You should see a terrible age when Noah's been writing about it. Okay. put an N for Noah. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. Okay. Here we go. This is a table that they give us, you two. This is a table they give us pounds of fish in price, okay? So one pound of fish is six and a half, two is 13, three is 19.5, four is 26. But here's the question. If I have N pounds of fish, I make it any number, I have to figure out the price. One. So while it's easy to say these are going up by how much? Anyone want to take a guess? Uh, yeah? One. No. <laughs> Savannah. Okay, so to go from this no, one to this 5. one, 2.5. If I add 2.5 to this, I get 9. No. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, I know, I know. I don't know. 3.5. Oh. If I add 6.5 here, and then I add 6.5 here, and I add 6.5 so really what I'm doing is I'm adding 6.5 every time. Why doesn't your hand <coughs> Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding 6.5 every time. What am I doing over here? You're adding one. I'm adding one. <laughs> wow. Someone close the window, please. I got it. They are closed. Are they? Are they? Okay. Just lock the window. All right, bring it back. Bring it back. All right. Now, when you're working in a table, you have to take into consideration both sides. So how do they interact? While this is going up by 6.5, notice this is not, but they relate to each other. Okay? So to get from 1 to 6.5, what could I do? Okay? If I wanted to go from 1 to 6.5 without adding or subtracting, what could I do? Yeah. Multiply it by 6.5. Yeah, I could do that. I could multiply it by 6.5. Okay, 1 times 6.5 is 6.5. We're just looking at all the different ways we can look at this. How about, so if I were to say I were to do that again, 2 times 6.5, okay, what would I get? Oh, 13. Look at that's right there. So if I multiply this column by 6.5, I can get that over there. And if I multiply this by 6.5, I can get that. They know what you're gonna do down here. So whatever the pounds of fish are, if I multiply that by 6.5, it will equal the price. This is an equation. 
This is an equation. It's n times 6.5 equals blank. Okay? So we'll call this P for price. For Parker. Okay? So let me give me this. Let's say I own a restaurant and I decide to order 372 pounds of fish. That's gross. Ew. Ew. Wow. How much would I have to pay for it? If we're not going to go and add up 6.5, 372 times. Hannah Harvey, what are we going to do? Uh, times 300 times uh, 6.5. Yes, 372 times 6.5, what'd you get? I did 300. Oh, do 372. Yeah, no, I'm going to give her a chance. I'm going to give her a chance. She's got her calculator out. I do do too. Two thousand four hundred and nineteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. So if I own a seafood restaurant and I have to buy lots of fish for the week, Gross. I buy lots of fish and I, I have to pay out for it. So this is kind of a way of saying, okay, here's the pattern. This really is, we could say how much per pound is the fish? Six dollars and fifty cents a pound. Do your parents ever go to the store and they buy meat? Yeah. It's always in price per pound. pound. No, I don't buy that this fish is six dollars and fifty cents a pound. That would be like that would probably be maybe like a perch or walleye. That'd probably still be a little cheap. Why can't you just catch the fish yourself? Salmon? Hey, shh. salmon's twelve ninety nine a pound. Oh wow. Yep. So if you want, but let's say you only are gonna eat three quarters of a pound or you're only going to eat a pound and a half, that's where your price comes. Oh, so you're saying this, this is cheap. This is like goldfish right here. That, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say goldfish. Okay, let's go, let's move on. Let's look at another chart. Okay, this one's going to be gallons of gas. Oh my gosh. Okay. One gallon of gas. Two gallon of gas. Two. Okay, miles driven, 18.1, 36.2, and then the question mark here and here. No, we gotta get a little bit more complicated. Not complicated, just a little bit, a little bit different stuff yet. Yeah. All right, let's focus on this because I don't want to run out of time. I want to give you time to answer, uh, to start your homework and ask good questions. So, <coughs> gallons of gas. One is 18. So this is like getting 18 miles out of every gallon of gas. Okay. What is happening over here? What am I adding? Yeah. You're multiplying by 18.1. What am I multiplying by 18.1? Well, you're you're multiplying by 2. Well, not, I don't know. So you do 18.1 times 18.1, which gives you 36.2. Hold up. Stop there. I think you need to add, and yes, I know where you're going with this. So I'm, if I add 18.1, I get that. If I add 18.1 again, I get that. So I, in theory, could find the next two values by just adding additional 18.1s. But what if I were to say this was 76 gallons of gas? Well, now all of a sudden, it doesn't look very fun to add up 18.1 76 times. Doable, mind you. Takes a little while. Maybe you have to have some popcorn while you do it. Okay, but not fun. Choke on the popcorn. There's got to be an easier way. Lixen. So you do um, 18.1 times gallons of gas. Perfect. Gallons of gas, so whatever these are, times 18.1. 
That works. Times 18.1. That works. <laughs> times 18.1. That works. So find 4 and 5 using this method. Wait, what's with the 77? You're going to do that one. I have 76. Hannah Harvey. Uh, for 4, Okay, and then for this last one, Jackson? 1,375.6. All right, so here's where we're going with this. I just, I just picked a random number here. Okay, I said if the number is way large, it's not going to make sense to add up 18.1 every time. You can do that for things like 4 and 5. Like Hannah could have easily added 54.3 and 18.1 and got 72.4. She could have added then 18.1 to that and got 90.5. Or just multiply the gallons of gas by 18.1 and get your values. So sometimes when you're working with big numbers, trying to find a pattern through multiplication will actually be easier than trying to add things up. It just takes a lot less time to go with multiplication versus addition. All right, we do have we do have a couple of things to look at here. Okay, I'm going to do one from a couple pages in here, and it's going to be about that many. All right. We're going to call this x, we're going to call this y, and we are going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. or I should say 4, and this one's going to be a question mark. You see, you see, negative 1, 2, what's the next one after that? 5, okay? Oh, no. There it is. What's that one? Blank. Blank and 14. 14. Wait, what number is this? What number is this? This is number 24. Wait, Are we going to go up to 24? Are we going to go up to 24? Uh, I don't this? remember. But it'll be important for you to write this down nonetheless. Okay. So I'm going to put this up at the top here. Now we've got to find some patterns. Got to find some patterns here. Okay. <laughs> what am I doing as I go from here to here to here to here to here? What am I doing? Yes, Parker. I'm adding one. Okay, so I'm adding one as I go through that. What am I doing on the bottom? Yeah, I'm adding three. Okay, so to go from here to here, I add three, and then I do the same here, and then the same here, and then the same here, and then the same here. Based on these patterns, you should be able to find the question marks, right? Yes. All right, so what is that? What are the question marks? Yeah. For x, it's five. For x, it's five. Yes, that is correct. So for right here, no, no I don't want that color. For right here, it's 5. And what about for this one? What's it going to be, Mackenzie Bird? 11. 11. 11. I'm going to throw a curveball in here. And I'm going to say, what if x was 20? What if x was 23? How would we find y? How would we find y? Okay, we have to come up with a relationship between x and y. We have to come up with a relationship between x and y. And we have to use 3 and 1. Anytime you're working on a problem like this, you have to use the numbers that are your intervals. Okay, so we have to do something to x and then do something to it again using the numbers 3 and 1. This is like a puzzle. So I can use x, I can use 3, and I can use 1. Okay? So let's play around with this. 3 times 
What if I go x plus 3 times 1? All right, so what would that be? What's 0 plus 3? Three? Three. Three, 3 times 1. Three. Three. Is that this? No. Uh, that doesn't work. All right, what else? What other operations could I do? X not times, not plus three. What about X? Divided by three, times three. Okay, let's try. All right, so let's go X. X times three plus one. All right, so what's one times three? Three. three. All right, plus one. Four. Four. Ugh, um, well, that's not it either. Um, X times one plus three. What if I what if I were to do not minus let's do not multiply but minus. All right, so let's go um, one minus three. Oh my gosh! Negative two. Plus one. Headache. Negative one. No, that doesn't work either. What about x times three? Then, all right, let's go there. Let's just stop there. What is zero times three? Three. Uh, zero. 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 How do we get then to negative one? Minus, Minus one. one. All right, so let's, let's do that then. Let's do this first and subtract one and see if that continues to work. What's one times three? Three. Minus one. Two. Oh my gosh, it's good. What about two times three? Six. Minus one. Five. Three times three? Minus one. Eight. Four Twelve. times three? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve minus one? Eleven. 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 So, all right, we found the pattern. Not easy, but it was there, okay? But look, I used either multiplication, addition, okay, multiplication, addition, subtraction, or division. Those were my options. And I could use the numbers one and three. So I had to play around with it. This might take you, I remember in, in being in your shoes in middle school, my teacher's name was... Uh, Mrs. Rogers, right? And so I remember working on this kind of stuff, and it would take me a while. No, no. Okay. What's the twenty-three times three? All right, twenty-three times three minus one is sixty-eight. That would be the answer here. That's what they want to get you to. They want you to find the pattern that lets you use the top numbers to find the bottom numbers. <laughs> it's the difference. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I did. Last but not least. Last but not least. All right. Let's do this. And the bottom ones are going to be red. <gasps> I know what you're doing. Oh, I do too. I do too. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I know what you're doing. This is our book. <laughs> this is our book. This is problem number five. What? I don't know about that. But all I knew is I want you to help me solve it. What am I doing between the top and the bottom? I'm doing. I'm multiplying by three. So by three, by three, by three. So what would be the next one? <laughs> Thirty-three. And so then what would be this one? Um, um, like hundred and twenty-two. Yeah. Hundred twenty-nine. Hundred twenty-nine. Are you sure? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. 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 Look it up on your calculator. Wait. You be looking up on my calculator. No. no. All right, you know, one of the things that I think is more interesting about this kind of stuff is that it's more like a puzzle, right? You're really just, you're really just trying to solve a puzzle. You're trying to find missing pieces. You're not having to a bunch of follow a bunch of rules. You're not having to, you know, I mean, you're basically looking for patterns. That's what we do when we solve puzzles or we play video games and we're trying to get to the end. Nah, we don't have the cool graphics. 
Um, you know, it's not a first person shooter, mind you, but it is. It is interesting. I am. I like it. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh my god. 